Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and welcome back to another uh, uh, Kenneth Well stationary engine build. So in the last episode I done this little fuel tank and uh, it was it was an adventure you know it's the first time I've uh, ever tried to solder sheet metal all I had was paste solder and um, so it was uh, it was interesting although I mean it turned out okay it is it is airtight and I did clean it up a little bit uh, but uh, this is only part of the fuel system um, but uh, just I did get uh, well I got a surprise I'll just I'll bring it for you if you've uh, seen my uh, shop update video you'll know what I'm talking about but anyway let's uh, let's carry on with this build so we've built the uh, oh by the way uh, I want to thank Emma Emma uh, made a casting of uh, the engine uh, casting for me um, and sent it to me all the way from Australia so Emma thank you very much I, I appreciate that and uh, Emma done a video on um, her ramming this up and this casting being poured so if you get a chance uh, go go take it uh, uh, go check it out I'll put a link in the description below the video so again uh, Emma thank you uh, very much it saved me from having to make some patterns and and um, get my sand ready and all that sort of stuff and it's uh, it's damp and and winter here so are getting close to winter so you you really saved me some energy and time and as you recall I've already done the uh, done the base so and I got a few other parts but I digress all right so the fuel system okay uh, consists of the tank a supply pipe and then three uh, tubes right that uh, hold the wick that the, the burner burner tubes and then a filler tube okay so so far I've got the uh, fuel tank done so the filler uh, wick and uh, the filler tube and the wick tubes call for 3 8 ID 7 16 OD brass well all I can find was I found 7 16 OD but the ID on this stuff here is just shy of 5 16 which probably won't matter as a matter of fact I drilled this hole 3 8 to lit and, and this is heavy enough that I can turn this down to a little step here down to 3 8 so that I can solder into the top so that's what I'm going to use for that and then the supply uh, tube uh, the supply pipe is 3 16 OD brass and uh, I have I had a length of that so I've cut a piece off and uh, at a hundred and uh, 12 millimeters so uh, we're, we'll use this this will get soldered into the pipe filler tubes will get soldered onto here and then some little uh, bases on the bottom uh, you know to, you know to close it all up so let's uh, let's get started. I'll uh, uh, we'll come over to the lathe and and we'll start with the filler tube. So and we'll go from there. So uh, I'll see you over there. Okay, uh, guys, I'm over here at the lathe. I have my piece of seven sixteenths inch brass chucked up. Now to make the um, the filler tube, it needs to be. I need a little shoulder uh, turned down to fit into the hole here, so it can be soldered to this tank. So that's what I want to do, and then uh, we'll part it off. Now, look, I this is uh, I'm still experimenting with uh, camera angles and stuff, so let's uh, we'll see how this works out. So, all right, let's go. That's a uh, longer neck than I need, but I want enough to measure here. See what we got to get to. We want to be at about 375. So let's see where we're at here. Let's do it this way. Okay, I'm at uh, 430. So let's take uh, let's take a bite off that. Let's take 15. I'm just going to go ahead and take 20. All right, see where we're at. Doesn't need much off of here. I don't have a whole lot to work with. Okay, that says I'm at 420. 
I took 10 off, that don't sound right. Okay, 415, 416. So let's take it a little more. Okay, I'm at 400, so I need another 25 to come off. This is a nice freshly ground tool, so it should cut pretty good. Okay, I'm at 478. So I think what I'm going to do is check it against our box here. Not quite. So let's nibble at it until we get it there. That's a nice fit. Just gonna come on there and create a shoulder. Adjust my tool a little bit so you get my newbiness and all of its glamour. Nice fit. Boy, I just got the dropsies. Yep. I'm just going to make that shoulder just a little deeper, though. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I need to part this off to length, and I think I need to adjust my gibbs. I'm feeling a little slop there. So I'm going to cut this to about 7 16 inch long. Okay, 
Okay, so I'll change out the uh, I'll change out to the parting tool and part this off and uh, just a hair long and then face it down. So I'm gonna adjust my Gibbs too. So sorry about the the protracted uh, <laughs> machining there, guys. I'll uh, get with you here in a minute. Okay guys, I got the parting tool in here. I'm gonna part this off to just a little bit over 7 16 I don't think the length actually matters, but that's what we're going for. So I got a little room on the other side to clean up. And that's a little fast. Bring this down so I'm bringing it back gears. Let's try that. there we have it it's uh, pretty warm I'll put that back in the chuck and I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit uh, you guys don't need to see that so I'll get back to that in a little bit so that would be the filler cap all right so now um, I need pieces about an inch long I need three pieces about uh, an inch uh, to use for my wick tube so I'm just going to uh, Bring this out and little ways and part some off. So I'll part one off and then you guys will know how the other three go. So no sense in beating you to death with that crap, right? I really need, really, really need to get I got a lot of carriage. I really need to get uh, some better scales, man. My scales are junk. So, Christmas coming up. Maybe my wife will get me some. I'm actually going to just take a hair over an inch. All right. So let's part this off. There's one, and I'm gonna do uh, two more of those, and I'll bring you. I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've cut off my filler tubes. So all I'm gonna do now is just put them here in the chuck and uh, face them down to length, or close to it anyway. And I'll make them all the all the same, or fairly close. All right, so let's face the burr off here, and I think I forgot to, to turn the mic on a while ago. <clears throat> okay. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I want to put up, put on the indicator, or my poor man's draw, as uh, I think Rich likes to call it. Well, I'm a poor guy, so that works out well. All right, so bring this up here to where I'm gonna take just a barely little facing cut off of this. Okay, there it 
is. Now, it's not in shot, but I got my little indicator put over here. And zero out. Take a measurement here. See where we're at. Okay, I'm at one inch, 47 thou, so I need to take 47 thou off of it. So, we'll uh, crank in 20 at a time. Turn this thing down. see where we're at I'm at one inch perfect so I will uh, put my carriage stop right there and so I well now I have to measure each one individual one because I don't have a stop back here all right so anyway I'm gonna cut the rest of them down to uh, uh, an inch long so that they're all uniform and file the burrs off and counter sink them just very lightly and uh, when I'm done with these I'll bring you back okay so I've got the three wick tubes and the fill tube done now the only thing I want to do here is that remember this is less than three-eighths of an inch and uh, I have to put in plugs and the rod that I have rather than turning the plug down to fit inside of it I'm just going to open these up to three-eighths of an inch so um, let me get that ready and we'll, I'll drill one and then I'll drill the other ones off camera so be right back okay so I have a uh, three-eighths or three-eighths inch uh, bit chucked in there let me tighten it down I guess one of those uh, um, keyless chucks would be nice wouldn't it? All right, so let's get this in here and snip that just a little bit. I don't think it'll take much. And um, let the tail stock down. Alrighty, let's drill it. Okay. Ah, look at there. I got some chowder marks. I didn't tighten it down, so I'm gonna have to remake a piece. So, um, hmm. Not sure what I'm gonna do here. This is uh, this piece is ruined. So I'm gonna ex experiment because that you know it's a pretty makes it a pretty thin piece of brass. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll step drill it and see what happens and and uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, so this time I'm gonna try an intermediate drill. I've chucked it a little harder. I didn't want to crush the tube. All right, so this is 2164, and then I'll follow it in with a 3/8. Let's so see how that works. All right, let's see if that done any better. But I bet it doesn't look like it did. All right, so I have a lamp. Yeah, see there, another one. See, I buggered that one up too. The chuck, or it's spinning in the chuck, and I'm afraid to tighten the chuck down too much because I don't want to crush the tube. So I think what I'll do is. I don't know. I want to sit back and think about this. So, um, 
But guys, I'm, I'm a newbie, right? We all know that, and uh, I've, I've figured out how to ruin parts now pretty good. Um, so I'm going to have to remake these again, uh, two of them. So uh, I'm open for suggestions. Um, you know, I don't know if my bit is, feels fairly sharp, so I don't think that's it. Um, so I'm open for suggestions. I need some, need some help figuring out how to drill. Uh, but I'm going to tinker around with it, um, as old Chippy, or Chirpy would say, and see what I can figure out. But uh, when you watch this video, maybe you can throw some suggestions my way. All right, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, guys, uh, I have discovered that uh, it's tough to be as dumb as me. You know, a while back I showed these uh, collets, and uh, so I thought, well, you know, that was kind of dumb. You know, the collets uh, protect the uh, protect threads and stuff and grip real hard. So I had a 7 16 collet, so that's when to put this in here. and Let's tighten this drawbar up here and see what happens when we drill it this way. Now I marked the bit so I wouldn't go too deep. Um, okay. Marked the bit so I wouldn't go too deep. Let's see what that does for us. All right, I think that's in frame. Tighten down the tailstock here. I'm just going to shoot right in with the 3 8 and let's see what happens now. Let's see what that got us, other than a really piece of hot brass. Now I'm under the impression that uh, you can just you can cut brass without any lubricant, right? I see so many people do that, but I, I want to make sure. I mean, I obviously didn't use any lubricant. Alright, see if I can get this out of here without burning myself. Okay, looky there. Ooh, that's warm. Alright, so other than it raised a little bit of a burr on the end, I'll have to clean that off. The uh, the uh, brass isn't marked up, so that's what I want, that's what I want to do. Um, so, I'm going to make two more pieces and clean this burr up, and then finally, let's uh, we'll move on to the next bit. So, I'll uh, see you here in a little bit. Okay, guys, well, that was a bit of a comedy of errors, but, um, you know, once I figured out, hey, just put it in the collet, um, they drilled and didn't mark up um, at all. So, I mean, they, they look pretty good. All right, so the next thing to do is uh, I've uh, cut a little piece of bar here, okay? So, um, we need to, need to drill some holes for the supply pipe right here. So, the supply pipe will go through two and into the third. Um, into the third one. So uh, I cut a piece of 3 8 uh, round that uh, I could put in there so I have something to back it when I go to center punch it. So um, you know I I'm leaving my mistakes in here and I think it's important because there are other new um, aspiring wannabe machinists you know like me so I think it's important to show my mistakes and 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 um, you know, learning from them and, and that sort of thing. Another thing that I noticed was that uh, um, even though I calculated the speed for the brass, it was a little little too fast. And the 3 8 bit drill that I was using uh, was was pretty dull. I, once I pulled it out of the uh, uh, Jacob's truck and took a good look at it, I was like, yeah, that's it's didn't help me any. Um, so I had another one that was a, a fair bit sharper and cut a hole, but it was a little tight. And I think I own like two reamers and one of them happens to be a 3 8 so I went ahead and run the reamers through these uh, so that they would slide on this piece of 3 8 uh, cold rolled steel. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to mark the hole locations for the uh, for the pipe. So if we look at the drawing, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, uh, they should be four millimeters up from the bottom. Of course I converted that to um, uh, Imperial. I've marked up the, uh, put some uh, um, sharpie on the uh, pieces of brass. So we'll come over here to the surface plate and uh, mark mark a line across these. And then I'm going to set the um, I'm going to set the uh, height gauge to about half and just put a line across it so that I have a cross mark. So let me get the uh, camera in position and uh, we'll mark these up real quick. So I'll see you in just a second. 
Okay, so I have the height gauge set to what would be equivalent to four millimeters. And I've just got this little piece of brass tube uh, backed up against this angle plate here. So let's put a mark across it. It's like so. And we'll do the same thing with the other one here. I've already marked one. Hopefully you can see that. All right. So those are uh, those are marked the height locations. All right, so I'm going to set um, I'm going to set the uh, height gauge to a, about half. I'm going to say uh, 200 and mm, let's say 220. So I'm at 157 and 225. That's that's close enough. This uh, this doesn't really matter. Um, because we're just making a reference line. So all I'm going to do is hold that back up against here and somewhere in there run a line across that so that I don't know if that shows up or not. Maybe if it'll focus. So I've got a place to center punch now. So I'm going to mark the other two and then uh, um, I'll get the camera set up uh, over by the vise here and we'll get these uh, we'll get these punched out and get them drilled for the pipe. So I will catch you here in just a minute. Okay, so I have this little Starrett um, spring-loaded punch. It's not a prick punch, but that's the one I used to initially mark these. And if my big head is in the way, I'm, I'm sorry. But uh, brass is pretty soft. All right. All right, so yeah, I got a pretty good mark there. So I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, other three, and then, uh, I mean the other two. And then we'll take them over to the drill press, press and we'll drill these 3 16ths for the fuel pipe. So I'll see you over at the drill press. Okay, so I have the, uh, I have the little brass tube in the vise and um, centered up as best as I can. All right, so I'm gonna, two of these will get drilled all the way through. The third one being on the end only gets one side drill. So let's try this out and see what happens. There's one, and I'll get the other ones uh, drilled, and I'll bring you back. Okay, well, we're getting a little closer. The, uh, the wick tubes have been drilled, and they fit on the pipe. So now um, I'll, I need to make some bottoms. And so the, let's see if I can get my hands in here. The, if we look at the wick tube as it goes through the pipe it needs a bottom on it so that calls for a piece of 3 8 brass so I need to slice off some little disc of 3 8 brass and this should be a challenge for me I'm gonna grind um, an angle on my cutoff tool and see if I can uh, you know get the cut piece to come off first before the pip and uh, see if that uh, that'll work and maybe give it a little sharpen too uh, but these need to be about, um, I don't know, maybe uh, they call for a half a millimeter, which is about 20 thousandths. But when I look in there, I got at least a sixteenth of an inch. And they're supposed to sit there slightly uh, recessed. So I'll measure these and then we'll go over to the lathe and we'll see if we can part some off. So I'll see you over at the lathe. Okay, so I've got the... Uh, parting tool in and I did sharpen it and I put a little bit of an angle this way hoping that when I cut off this little bitty thin section here that it will pop off first so um, I measured the uh, wick tubes over there and I can go about a sixteenth of an inch so I'm gonna bring the cutter up here and this doesn't have to be perfect so I got the first one set and I lock the carriage and let's see how well this parts off
there's the first one <clears throat> and I see I need to raise my tool just a little bit <clears throat> all right so let me uh, do a little tool adjustment and we'll try this again so I'll bring you right back here in just a minute okay I have my tool adjusted <clears throat> so maybe we'll do a little better so let's let's try parting again like I said this doesn't have to be perfect all right lock the carriage and let's see what happens all right that's two And let's set up for the last one. Let's face that off. There we go. All right, let's set up for the last one here. Lock the carriage and nip this one off, and we'll have the bottoms all cut off. Hopefully I can find that. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I have all three bottoms. Yep, I didn't find the camera there. There we go. <laughs> anyway, I have all three bottoms uh, cut, so I just need to knock these little little nips off. I'll do that with a file and uh, everything will be ready to be soldered up so <clears throat> I'll uh, try to decide see how much time's on the tape and see if the next one's going to be soldering it up because um, I do want to talk about that a little bit as a matter of fact I will I think this is going to be the end of this one and uh, in the next episode uh, we'll, so we'll solder up the uh, uh, the fuel tank and supply line so uh, until then I'll uh, see you then so I've got a couple things that I want to say here on the exit and and we'll go from there. So I'll talk to you here in just a minute. Okay guys, so I have the uh, I have the disc made and the little nubs, uh, they filed off pretty easy. Um, so I have three of those. These, are, these make the bottoms and then I have the three wick cups here and then the pipe, the filler valve or tube and course the fuel tank so the only thing really left to make for this is a little vent cap I'll make that uh, I'll make that on my own you guys have seen some knurling. I'm just gonna make it out of a piece of uh, I think half inch aluminum or something like that whatever I got and uh, knurl it and and vent it and whatnot so um, I tell you what I, I took this project on as a learning project and it's been definitely been a learning experience uh emma um, makes it look so easy mr pete makes it look so easy but i tell you what if there are five ways to mess something up i'll find six so just saying so here's the situation i had the the um, copper tubing that uh, i have is uh it's 7 16th od and it's uh, uh, 307 thousandths ID, right? So the plans call for the plans call for uh, three eighths ID F for the filler. It probably doesn't matter, but uh, you know I didn't want to turn down uh, up pieces to make smaller discs to put in the bottom. So I went ahead and thought, well, I would just drill these out. And uh, so the first one, I messed up two of them. The first one I stuck in the chuck and I drilled it out three eighths and 
and you can see the chowder marks from the chuck. It ruined the piece. So I thought maybe what I needed to do is use a step up. It was just too much causing it to slip because brass tends to be a little slippery anyway. And uh, so I, I used an intermediate size, something like a 21 64th or something. I can't remember. And then up to 3 8 but I had the same problem. But one thing that I did notice after uh, messing up the second one was that the 3 8 bit that I had was, uh, it was pretty dull and pretty bad shape. So I did find another one. It done a little bit better. So... And then I realized, or it dawned on me, well, I have collets. And, and I looked at my collets, and sure enough, I had 7 16 So I thought, well, I bet that would grip it. And sure enough, I was able to uh, drill, um, and it come out just fine. The only other thing that I'd done is I happen to have, I think I got two reamers, and I can only find one, and it happens to be a 3 8 So uh, I went ahead and just run the reamer through there to brush, them, brush these uh, holes up a little bit. So because the uh, drill I was using was cutting just a little bit undersized. So uh, made one little tool, so to speak, to, um, to do these. And I think I've already lost it. Um, I took a piece of uh, uh, 3 8 uh, cold rolled and uh, cut a little piece just a little bit longer than the tube to make it easier to, to punch these. So that's where I'm at uh, in the next... Uh, in the next segment, uh, we're going to solder these up, and uh, we're going to do it old school. So I might want to practice on something. I, th I think uh, I think I will. That maybe these pieces here that I run I might practice a little bit, so I don't embarrass myself so much. Um, I think it's important to leave the mistakes in there, right? Because uh, there's other people trying to learn, and and I'm going to make mistakes. So other than that, guys, hey, thanks for uh, following along. Um, Thanks for not laughing so loud I could actually hear you. But uh, yeah, you know how it is. Um, so I appreciate it. So if stuff like this interests you, please consider hitting like and subscribe and sharing with your friends. And uh, until the next video, have a blessed day.